Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Today's episode, let's take a look at the new iOS 6. So iOS 6 is new today for the iPhone, the iPad, and the iPod Touch. Now a lot of the new things that you've heard that are coming with the iPhone 5 are actually just new features with iOS 6, which means you can get them if you've got an iPhone 4 or 4S or an iPad. Let's go and take a look at what some of these new features are. So one of the big new features is the replacement of the old Maps app, which used Google Maps, with a new one from Apple. And you can see right away it looks a little different. The graphics and colors are a little bit different, but it works in generally the same way. You can move around, you can zoom in, you can look at different options here like showing traffic, you can switch to hybrid and satellite mode. So it works in a very similar way. You won't have to learn how to do anything new. One of the new things though is the replacement of Street View, which allowed you to look at photos of different positions on streets with the idea of this flyover view. So with flyover you can zoom in here and then hit this button in the bottom right and now you get these kind of 3D views which take you into major cities and you can actually rotate around and you can see that the buildings are actually 3D models with textures applied to the sides. So you can actually zoom in pretty closely in on the streets and fly through them. You've also got turn by turn spoken directions. So you can do directions like you did before. Choose a route. Then you can hit start. In an upcoming video I'm going to show you how well these work with Siri too. You can actually basically do the entire thing hand free. You can ask Siri to take you to a location and then get voice directions from Siri for each turn until you get there never having to glance at your screen. Siri also has a new functionality. For instance uh, it can give you sports scores. How did the Rockies do last night? Okay, sports fans, let's take a look. The Rockies is on a four game losing streak right now. Rat. Siri can also do something everybody's wanted for a while now, which is to launch apps. So, for instance, Open Audible. There's also FaceTime integration. Of course, before you could have shared photos using the Facebook app and a variety of other apps, but now you can actually do it uh, inside the Photos app right after taking a picture. You can share via Facebook very easily. The trick is, of course, having set up Facebook in your preferences first. Now, in the Photos app, you have the ability now to create new photo streams. Before you had your personal photo stream, but now you can actually hit plus button there and you can share it and make it public. So you can have these shared photo streams or share them to a particular person. Another big new feature is the new app Passbook. In here now you can add various things like boarding passes, tickets, store cards and coupons. Now of course the company that you're working with has to have supported Passbook and supposedly a lot are going to be doing that uh, in the very near future. FaceTime is another new feature of iOS 6. Not that FaceTime is new. It's not. But the ability to do it over cellular wireless networks is new. Now of course it depends on your carrier whether or not they allow you to do it. So the Do Not Disturb is another cool new feature here. Uh, it's pretty basic. You turn it on and then uh, the phone won't ring. Uh, messages won't sound or light up the screen. Um, it, in emergencies if somebody tries to call you twice in a row very quickly uh, it will ring through. Uh, you also can customize by going to Notifications, Do Not Disturb and you can actually set a schedule for when it automatically goes on. So for instance have it set up for uh, you know, uh, nighttime or, or when you're busy. Uh, also, um, you can allow calls from a group that you set up, and there's the function for having whether or not repeated calls will actually ring through. There are also a variety of options when you get a call. For instance, you can have a button on the screen and it could send directly to voicemail. You can also set it to remind you later to call the person back or send them a text message in response to their phone call. Safari has a few new tricks like for instance iCloud tabs will now sync with your Mac with Mountain Lion. Uh, also uh, in Reader if you go into Reader and then you do the Share button you can add it to your reading list and it will be available offline as it is in Mountain Lion. So another cool thing about the Safari app is now that there's a full screen mode. If you go horizontal you get this little full screen button here in the bottom right hand corner and you go full screen and you can simply 
tap that again to go back to have the top and bottom bars. One of my favorite new features is with the camera app and it works fine on my iPhone 4S even though it was shown as a feature of the iPhone 5. Um, it allows you to take panoramics very easily. In the camera app you can click the options button and then select, select panorama and then wave your phone vertically over a scene and you get a large image taken of that scene. So it could be way bigger than the 8 megapixels that the camera normally takes. You can take something that's a 20 megapixel pixel picture of a whole area about 180 degrees. One thing that's missing now from iOS 6 is the YouTube app. It was a default app since the very first iPhone. But Apple and Google have been growing further apart and there was a licensing thing between Google and Apple for that app. So now it's gone. YouTube works fine in the Safari browser. But there's also a third party YouTube app by Google that you can download in the App Store. And you can see here it works pretty much the same way the old YouTube app did, perhaps with even more functionality now. So iOS 6 works differently on different devices. For instance, on the iPad, there's no Passbook app. That's strictly for the iPhone. And some older devices won't be able to upgrade to it. For iPhones, you need the 3GS or newer to use iOS 6. The original iPad doesn't work with iOS 6. You can only use iOS 5 with that, but the iPad 2 and up does. And iPod Touch 4th generation or 5th generation work with iOS 6. But again, features may vary. For instance, Siri is only available on the 4S and the 5 on the iPhone. And it's only available on the new iPad for iPads. So it depends which one you've got as to which features you can use and exactly how it looks and works. For instance, Safari is definitely different on the iPad than it is on the iPhone with tabs and more features and things like that. Hope you found this useful. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the Videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.